If I asked you to fill in the blank for this statement, Genshin Impact wouldn't be Genshin Impact without, I'd expect a variety of answers. An addictive gacha system, pretty characters, <clears throat> minimal rewards, an immersive story, compelling lore. Yes, yes, these are all true, but I'd put my money on one answer prevailing, or at least coming into the top three. It's score. I mean, there's an entire touring orchestra, and I got to go. Not only is the Genshin soundtrack beautiful and itself filled with lore, but it is also expected. Even if you log on quickly for your dailies with your volume muted, you are immersed in the atmosphere of, say, Liyue, because you can't imagine Liyue without a hopping rhythm, lively strings, and the familiar call of... <laughs> if Liyue suddenly lost its score, it wouldn't be Liyue. Well, uh, of course it would be, but in the same way as the defiled statue is still an animo statue of the Seven. So, what if I told you music is more than just an element in Genshin? What if I told you that Genshin itself is a score? And not just any score, but a symphony. Call me Kairos, and please, silence all devices. The performance is about to begin. In Fair Tevat, where we lay our scene, a symphony is composed which sings the song of fate. But to understand this universal score, we must first understand a symphony. A symphony is a musical composition comprised of four movements, the first of which is usually something like a sonata, the second quite slow, something akin to a canzonetta, a third, sometimes in the style of a scherzo, and the fourth an allegro. Now, do note that these are usually quite flexible. What's most important to note is that the first and fourth movements are usually quite fast-paced, with the second quite slow, and the third more of a dance. For the foundation of this video, I'm going to establish how I view this symphony, and that is as Tevat itself, with each movement representing two nations. Though you may beg to disagree, the score to this symphony lies hidden in the depths of a forgotten sea. So, to find the answers which we seek, let us delve into the nation of Chlamoria, and from there we can set forth unto the stars. The stars? Oh, <laughs> well, about that. Before we begin, however, a note on pronunciation. Even according to the lore, as stated in Time Trekker, Ramuria, Chlamoria, is pronounced with that guttural R. I've been pronouncing it as such since the beginning of Fontaine, et je parle français, so this is the pronunciation I'm going to go with. Also, Bedtime Story is now out, so there will be spoilers in this video, but all will be very vague. None of the lore given in the quest will be discussed in this video in detail. One of the most influential musical compositions in history, The Planets by Gustav Holst is an exemplar of modern classical music, being composed in the early 20th century and being greatly distributed through live recordings not long after its completion. The Planets is composed of seven pieces, Mars, the bringer of war, Venus, the bringer of peace, Mercury, the winged messenger, Jupiter, the bringer of jollity, Saturn, the bringer of old age, Uranus, the magician, and Neptune, the mystic. Though it could be argued that all hold weight regarding Genshin's score, for the purposes of this video I want to focus on only one, Neptune, the seventh and final piece of this septuplet. The seventh, huh? What a completely unimportant number within the lore. And for a nation founded upon the history and ideals of ancient Rome, resting beneath the waves, it seems almost a perfect mirror. I want to state a disclaimer here, though, that I will be glossing over the nuances of the score here. I would love to discuss Genshin's music as it pertains to lore more in depth in a later video. The main issue with that is that I don't have the score for a majority of the pieces, which makes it very difficult for me to present such a topic with any confidence. 
Also, though I am a classically trained violinist, I am not a music major and have not studied theory as intently as many other musicians, so please do not take all of what I have to say as doctrine. Without further ado, let us continue. Neptune is conducted in 5-4, otherwise known as quintuple meter, in the key of G-sharp Phrygian, which in my 15 years of music education I've actually never heard of before, so I did some searching. Phrygian is a key originating mostly in ancient Greece, though in its more medieval iterations also impacted ancient Roman music, which really has no grand correlation in my argument here, save for the fact that the Atlantean region of Chlamydia itself is based upon ancient Rome, and Chlamydia just so happens to be the region in Genshin with the greatest musical connections. Remember in the World Quest, the last day of Chlamydia, the Grand Symphony is that which Remus composed to free the people of Remuria from, as he put it, fate's shackles. We learn in the Harmost Notes that the Musica Mundana is the music of origin. It is the beginning and end of all music. From it does all spring, and to it shall all return. False and true celestial signs, namely the inner and outer, lower and upper astrological signs. Eurigetia will provide a detailed explanation of this section. The tuning of the seasons and passing of time, the defined elements, everything in the universe operates according to the order of this music. Musica humana is the music of the world of mortals. The music of mortals and gods are no different from one another, and both can be classified in this category, for their essence is that of the harmony produced by the musica mundana striking the quality of the soul. Imagine a harp, where every physical entity in the world corresponds to a single one of its fine strings. Magnificent music comes not from a single string, but the resonance of all strings. This is the music we call the Musica Mundana. The Musica Instrumentalis is the most fundamental music, and there is no need to elaborate on it. Even slaves can understand. As we have seen in both Caribert and now Bedtime Story, memories are capable of being woven and rewoven in order to convince, preserve, and protect. Now, let me preface, when I originally contrived my connection between the planets and Genshin Impact, it was because I simply noticed similarities with the scores. Little did I know that this was intentional, or intentional as far as I can speculate, for a much larger reason. A universal reason, if you will. In a brief intermission, I would like to mention Roosevelt's wonderful videos on Fortuna and Chlamydia here for more information presented in a way that is much clearer than what I will be contriving from here on out. Musica Mundana is what is referenced in the Harmos notes, along with Musica Humana and Musica Instrumentalis. Clearly, according to the Harmos notes, Musica Mundana is the most important of the three, so let's understand in more detail what this alliterative title truly means. Musica Mundana is also known as Musica Universalis, or the music of the heavens or spheres. Do you see where this is going? The heavens, the spheres, the sun, the moon, the planets. Holst's idea for such a grand composition isn't new. In fact, it is an idea almost as old as humanity, and one rightly so, for we can hear the cosmic microwave background of the universe. So yes, in a way, the universe does produce its own music. Now, who do we then encounter in Chlamydia but Boethius, the Harmost himself, who Hoyaverse, deciding to pull a Dante and insert real people into their allegorical tale, was in fact a real person, who developed De Musica, or the three categories as mentioned above. Musica Mundana, as in Genshin, is the most intellectual of the three. It is not nearly as general as Musica Humana, and certainly not as base as Musica Instrumentalis. Musica Mundana is that which in itself exemplifies, to the real Boethius, the glory of God himself within its composition. Famous astronomer Johannes Kepler also did much work with the mathematical nature of music throughout our solar system, though I won't go into too much detail on it here, I figured it worthy enough to mention, also because Kepler, in all of his work on classifying the planet's musical range, fails to classify Uranus and Neptune because, of course, they had yet to be discovered. While we're on the topic, I'd be remiss not to mention Uranus here, since, according to Holst, Uranus is the magician. While I don't yet have a wide-reaching theory or analysis to present upon this piece, I offer this.
In the nation wherein we first encounter proprietors of magic, such a score seems all too fitting. So, why Neptune? There's a reason I chose to focus on this piece, and not Uranus, I promise, and that reason lies in the staging of Neptune. You see? Haha, <laughs> get it? Neptune, Poseidon, the sea? Oh my god, just call me Sano. Okay, so Neptune is staged like any other orchestral piece, but with one key difference. It has a chorus. Now, this is not a point I was going to raise at all, but if you're expecting it, here you go. Every voice of the chorus represents the songs of all the heavenly spheres, accumulation of the music of the universe. Well, no. I mean, yeah, but no. Let's look at the literary meaning of the chorus. Choirs are used in epic poems and plays as the group which introduces the setting and describes or recounts events to the audience. The most famous uses of choirs that will likely come to mind are Oedipus Rex and Romeo and Juliet. Oh, a Shakespeare reference? Whatever will I relate using Shakespeare? If you're thinking Kaya's hangout, then you're not thinking correct. I mean, I would, I could, I could talk about Kaya for hours, but that's the problem, and this is mainly supposed to be a Fontaine video, so feel free to ask me about Kaya in the comments. Kaya is generally relevant to this though, since for some reason Hoyo loves to give Kaya references to Shakespeare, and the phrase all the world's a stage has been used numerous times regarding either Kaya's lore or any event he happens to be a part of, i.e. Bottle Land last summer. But the same phrase is applicable to another figure who hid quite an elaborate past from us. One who paced across the stage of the opera Epicles until her curtain was called by the one pulling at her puppet strings. Farina and Fosolo. I think it's mildly hilarious that every time I make a video relatively character-centric, it also happens to be around the time their banner is being released, but that's beside the point. The chorus in a play knows the truth. They have a sort of foresight to the events in order to make sure the audience is understanding the plot. In a way, you could say that the chorus is almost the maestro within a theatrical performance, guiding the audience as a conductor would guide their orchestra, and a director their actors. Were Fontaine to have a chorus, the voices of that choir would belong to Egeria and Fosselor. Not only is Neptune the only piece within the planets to include a choir, but it is also the first piece of orchestral music to ever use a choir completely hidden from view. To evoke a sense of ephemerality and pure, uninfluenced mysticism, Holst arranged it so that, in his own words, the chorus is to be placed in an adjoining room, the door of which is to be left open until the last bar of the piece, when it is to be slowly and silently closed. The chorus, the door, and any subconductors that may be found necessary are to be well screened from the audience. Simply voices, wordless and elegant, carrying a well-intended score to rest. Let me be completely transparent with you. I adored the Fontaine Archon quest. Even the infamous Act 3 has come to grow on me, but I've often felt that Fontaine as a whole is quite disconnected from the surrounding lore of Genshin. There is none of Tevat's universal architecture. Yes, we have the Nartes and Kreutz Institute and Ordo, the introduction of Skirk and Sertology, an insight into a widely influential Fatui organization and operation, one instance of tender strength playing in the background, unless I'm mistaken, and, of course, Nouvellet. Need I say more on him? But our newest Dainslev quest didn't even have us lay a toe in or on Fontenian waters or soil. We stayed in Sumeru. We returned to the chasm. Again! Which, by the way, is the most lore-relevant region in all of Genshin. Don't even get me started, because I love the chasm so much, it's actually insane. <clears throat> anyway. Storm Terror's Lair, Dragonspine, Tsurumi Island, Enkanomiya, the Chasm, Sumeru, they all have such deeply rooted, intertwined intricacies. But to this I say, Fontaine doesn't need to supply that same connection. It is perfectly stable enough to stand alone. And yes, before anyone says anything, I know the region itself is newer than the others and is fairly more modern in the context of the history of Tevat, which makes sense as to why, etc, etc, etc. The reason for this is because Fontaine represents the entire entity 
of Tevat. A grand symphony composed by an ancient civilization, conducted by maestros whose orchestras shall follow them regardless of changes in time or key. And indeed, we have had many maestros, the primordial one, the four shining shades, the heavenly principles, the harmost of Remaria, the hydro archons, the five sinners of Conria, and perhaps most importantly, whatever heavenly bodies lie beyond that fake sky. These are our choirs, so to speak, the voices hidden from the gaze of wandering travelers, heard yet hardly seen. The song of the heavens, musica mundana, the truth of this world that we grow closer and closer to revealing. So, sino pun aside, the nation of Hydro finding influence in a score for the planet named after the ancient Roman god of the sea is just a little uncanny. Wouldn't you agree? But for this particular movement, I shall now bring the coda to a close, though I'm sure the melody here woven shall resonate throughout both the skies and seas of bygone eras. Until the next opus begins upon its pace, let your curiosity harmonize with the newfound knowledge through the sources compiled in the description box below. As always, thank you so much for listening, and you can call me Kairos.